Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Praise Starts Live. I'm Ryan Dahl, and I'm excited today to talk with Chrissy Nordhoff all about songwriting. She is a woman who is behind so many songs that churches are singing all around the world and has written a great book called Writing Worship that is available. She's got a website about writing worship. Brave Worship is a label that she's created, a songwriter's community or collective so she is all about helping people know how to write songs and how to tap into their own unique personality and gifting for that, especially women. So if you're interested in that, I think you will love this conversation. Let's get to know Chrissy Nordoff. Chrissy, so great to talk to you today. Yes, thank you so much, Ryan. Glad to be uh, here. I love your background. I, I love old wood. I love farms. I love barns. I love everything that Nashville stands for, but I'm like 6,000 miles away. So uh, oh. it's awesome. Do you live yeah, on like a little farm area or something like that? Or what's your area like? Yeah, we're just south of Nashville, about 30 yeah. miles. So um, we're a little bit out in the country. So we're, we're mm. in a neighborhood, but um, but we drive by cows to get here, which makes me happy because I grew up, I actually grew up on a farm in Michigan and Did yeah, this really? is an old farm fence. Yeah. This is a farm fence on the wall behind me here. So you yeah. were right about that. Yeah. Do you know, I have like, if you only knew my own story, how I have gone and taken down homes, uh, like old homes and collected the old wood and put it up in my home or my office. I've gone to fences, you know, and I like clean the wood, wow. saw it off all nicely. You can see I've got brick behind me, but I've got other yeah. walls around our office. I mean, we made it just feel like Tennessee or, you know, where you live. Aww. So I love that vibe. Aww, and I heard awesome. just kind of jumping into it that you've got something going called Songs for from the barn is that right so this like goes yes. deep into your love why don't you just open up and tell us a little bit about that i don't think it's it's out yet but it's coming and i'm interested just because i like barns and worship <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we're leaking songs a little bit at a time and they're gonna collect into this ep called songs from the barn so yeah. Um, we actually did the recording live in a barn here in thompson station in my hometown Mm -hmm. And um, it was actually at a church called Hope You See, which is um, the main part of the church is in a barn. It's on a historic property. But it's also sort of a nod to the future for us. And that is, um, you know, my heart has mm -hmm. been growing for writers for years. And for about mm -hmm. 15 years, I've had a vision of this place called the Song Barn. And, um, uh. you know, this is coming more and more into focus over the years, but... Um, yeah. yeah, so we're headed towards that in the next year, just um, hoping to create a home, a place for belonging for songwriters and a place where we can train up writers and worship teams alike. Mm -hmm. So that's it's sort of towards the future for us as well. So great. Well, just on the side, just between you and me tonight, I'm actually getting a bunch of my friends together and we're going into a barn because uh, we play cornhole. I'm not sure if you know the game cornhole. Yeah. But so we've got a friend. Yes. We've got a barn. We're going into the loft. It's going to have like they do weddings in this place and everything. But we're going to take it over and just have some great community together. So 
People think that I'm a little sounds... bit of a nerd for that, but um, I do really uh, like you, Barnes. You would fit right in down here. You would really? totally fit right in. Yes. Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, it's yeah, very... they have cornhole, like, um, competitions around here. There's a neighborhood just down the street. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a thing. you'd fit right in. See, the thing about me is, like, it's all my life is all about cornhole and worship. So somehow the two really? of those things. Yeah, oh, yeah, I love those, too. <laughs> But I'll tell you what is the common uh, ground between the two of them is, is is the community that comes around those two things. Yeah. Like you, worship is just people coming together. And of course, they're singing. But with Cornhole, it's just it's a lot of laughter, but it's still a lot of community. And and I like mm -hmm. people around, you know, and and yeah. then I like authentic, um, natural sort of earthy environments like bricks and wood and steel and mm. uh, farms and grass and fences and all those kinds of things. So mm. anyways, here we okay. are up in Canada talking to someone in Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> so, well, let's talk a little about your heart for songwriting. I think as I even look in praise charts, it's funny, in praise charts, your name is behind like dozens and dozens and dozens of songs, not necessarily headlining all of these songs as the key artist. I'm sure you are a singer and worship leader as well, but um, but obviously you have a real heart and passion for writing songs and you're in a lot of songwriting communities. So. Maybe just give us a little window into, like, what's the life like for Chrissy in behind this? Or do you just have a bunch of collectives where you are writing songs? Or how did you get into this world of songwriting? Yeah, well, um, mm -hmm. really, I started writing songs um, when I was about five years old on the back pasture of my family farm. Mm -hmm. And was always inspired by creation as well. But... Um, I didn't know that's what I was doing, and I don't think my parents did either or knew what to do with that. Mm -hmm. But um, I ended up, I went to college at Anderson University in Indiana, and I had a class there, um, Songwriting 101, with Gloria Gaither. She was the professor for a short season. So Really? Um, yes. Like, she and is the epic songwriter of all time, almost, yes. or one of them. Yeah. Yes. So I learned so much from her and um, yeah. really I had no idea what a passion that would birth in me for songwriting until much later. But yeah. I knew I wanted to do Christian music for, for a long time. Since I was probably 14, I knew that. So I moved to Nashville right after college and really was pursuing more of the independent artist thing and had some a record deal fall through and Decided I just was going to do the independent artist thing because I could have flexibility and have kids and, you know, um, choose when I was home and that kind of thing. And it really took, there was one song I did um, that I recorded live with my church for the church project. And it was mm -hmm. really the first church project I ever remember hearing about. And um, that song was Your Great Name. And that was mm. the first time I didn't sing a song that I wrote. And mm -hmm. it was hard for me. And um, I just remember the Lord saying, I want you to sing in the choir and let go and watch what I can do. If you'll let go, I want to show you something. Yeah. So wow. I let go and um, and saw what the Lord did with that song and it blew me away. So through that, um, I got other opportunities for writing and yeah. um, ended up really loving just being most comfortable, actually, more comfortable than the artist space, more comfortable in the writing room and yeah. loving getting to pour hope and, um, you know, joy and peace into people's songs and then watching those songs travel and yeah. um, staying at home to raise my baby. So it's been a beautiful, um, it's been a beautiful thing. I feel like I get to translate hearts. That's a yeah. lot of what I feel like I do. So I'm serving you know, the worship team or the artist or whoever I'm writing with, but um, was able to be on staff for several years doing that whole staff writer thing. And um, it's been mm. a beautiful journey. I'm really thankful. Um, I'm really thankful that I get to have a chance to serve that way. Yeah. I love, I love the song, Your Great Name. It's so powerful. And uh, it's been carried by a number of voices, of course, probably most prominently was Natalie Grant, right? She just mm -hmm. let that song kind of erupt. And uh, boy, I bet if I was you, I wouldn't be more proud to have 
a voice like that carry my song. And oh, it's so incredible. incredible. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, she's amazing. So, yeah. Well, somewhere along the journey, you came alongside and um, and wrote this book, and you've got a website that kind of goes along with it. So, so like you're really yeah. serious about helping, not just even just writing, but helping others understand how to write worship. How did this book come out, and what was like birthing in your heart to want to write something? What did you feel was was missing? You know, in mm -hmm. the in the book world, I guess you might say to to write something like this. Yeah. Um, well, I'd have to go back a little bit to mm -hmm. when I first moved to town, I was praying for a mentor. And I really feel like that's a lot of what we're missing in that world is mothers and fathers that will mm -hmm. walk us through and teach us what they learned. And um, I couldn't find anyone for a female specifically that learned how to balance ministry and industry and family, those three mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And um, I prayed that prayer for 15 years. And Finally got tired of praying that prayer, and I asked the Lord the 15th year, Lord, why are you not answering that prayer? Like, that's a good prayer, you know? Yeah. Like, um, that's a biblical prayer. And I, I heard him say to me in that moment, be what you need. Hmm. And so I began to really start thinking about those coming behind me. Of course, I didn't know everything, but I knew some things, you know, being here 15 years and um, having babies and writing and all the things I was doing. And uh, so I began gathering women in my living room. And um, over time, that grew into this ministry called Brave Worship and community, really collective, you said, which is a great word to describe it. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's really been a place of encouraging female writers for the last 10 years. So I've been doing that for 10 years. And um, I remember we took a writing trip. We came back home. And um, the girl said to me, we want to learn more about writing worship songs. Like, we're hungry for more. And so hmm. I would write a week of teaching, and then I'd bring them into my home. And we had girls flying in from all over. And I just took 12. And we I would teach a week. And then um, we would write. They would put into practice what we, what we learned that day. And then I'd send them home to work on some stuff. And then they'd come back two weeks later. And we, we did that until it felt complete. And so really it all started with this mentorship program. Um, mm -hmm. And so out of that mentorship, it felt so deep. It felt like we needed a better way to onboard people, like just um, maybe an easier stepping stone than, <laughs> than jumping off the diving board. So, um, so yeah, so then I saw a need for, I was getting calls from um, young guys too, and I have two boys two young men. So I, I thought, man, I have a heart for that too. So uh, we opened it up and became also um, a resource for the church really is what it is. So um, the writing worship community is female and male uh, mm -hmm. songwriters, but a lot of that community um, sort of is about the resources. So, you know, we've got a book, um, yep. we have the book, the courses, the mentorship, and, uh, I've got a little uh, window of the conference. site here that you can kind of show us yeah. through. Yeah. I do actually really love this top image. Just it's such a bold statement of you know how uh, chaotic sometimes you know what that is? worship. No, tell me what is it? Do you know what it is? That no. is actually my journal um, when I was writing your great name. Those are you can really? see some of the lyrics. But yes. that's a photocopy of my actual journal. Wow, from that's the where process. it comes from. That's, all the scribbling like. out, all the lines, the arrows, <laughs> the underlines. Yeah. It's so great. Yeah, yeah, that's it's crazy. I don't know. I I was thankful I was able to find it, but yeah, yeah. you know, one of the areas of your site I did want to just ask about because I I find this to be so practical. If anyone's watching huh? or listening and and wants to be encouraged and equipped, so you have up in the top this little songwriter personality test and I was looking in your book you've got a whole chapter on songwriter personalities why don't we just spend a couple of minutes taking just this one little area of your teaching and mm -hmm. tell us about I mean I'm not going to take the test in front of everyone that would be too embarrassing but <laughs> no but but what is the idea behind the personality of a songwriter tell me about yeah. that yeah well uh I noticed just when I was going into rooms after many 
many hundreds of co-writes, I just mm -hmm. noticed that I was starting to um, sort of do my own little evaluation when I walked into a room, asking people questions, trying to figure out how they worked mm -hmm. and relating them then to one of my other friends that was a co-writer, you know? So if I could understand how they process, we could use our time much better. I would know how to work with them better. And um, so over time, I just sat down and developed this test. I really saw seven personalities. You know, a lot of times people have said to me, are you lyrics or melody? And there's, you know, two categories, that's it. Mm -hmm. But I saw, I saw seven different personalities. There's a music category, there's a lyrics category, but in the center, I saw a crafter, crafter category, mm -hmm. which can lean one way or the other way. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think it's important, um, especially at this stage where I am now, knowing who you are when you walk into a co-writing situation. Um, first of all, for your own you know, knowledge and understanding about how you work best. But second of all, um, just to know how you'll work best with other people. And mm -hmm. if you can work with people that have different strengths than you, then you're more likely to have a great co-write. And right. um, we've tried this, we've done this many times, and we've had so much better success if we set up co-writes according to the personality tests Yeah. Uh, than if we're just throwing people in rooms. Hmm. So... Um, yeah. Can it's, you give me like like I don't know if I can ask this, but what's your yeah. what's your songwriting personality? Yeah. So my songwriting personality is um, my number one is the hearing, prophetic mm -hmm. gift. It's the listener. So okay. When I'm in a when I'm in a co-writing situation, and it's in the crafter category. So sometimes yeah. I hear lyrics. Sometimes I hear um, melodies. But uh, but I'm listening. That's what hmm. my focus is. I'm, I'm listening to hear, um, you know, just the sound of heaven really in the room. And I, I had a co-write actually yesterday. I was doing this with some new writers and I like to just, you know, worship for a little bit before we even jump in or talk about anything. Yeah. And I like to just listen for what, you know, God wants to say that day. Hmm. And um, so I was doing that yesterday and we got done and one of the guys said, is that already? Yes, that part you were just saying and um i said no i just heard that i just heard that today right now um so but i think you know uh if you look at your scores in every category it's almost more interesting so if you take the extended test it'll show you that but yeah. my second gift is um content which is the lyrics side of things so i tend to lean more heavily that direction um but yeah it's it's really a it's a fun thing and it frees me up from feeling like now I wish I could have told my younger self this, you know, like, yeah, you don't have to be good at everything. Like, right. Just, just do what you're strong at and then, and then uh, connect with other people and let them carry what they're strong at. Yeah. Um, it works so much better that way, you know? Hmm. Um, do you find when you're, when you're writing songs, are you usually coming into a room already with an idea and you're hoping to make it work <laughs> or or do you really just come in with a blank slate and go oh, this has to be fresh and new from this little community that we have in this room you know because yeah. i know there are literally rooms in nashville they're like they got a little couch a little piano they are writing rooms there's buildings dedicated to this and um this is how it works, right? And yeah. So, but I, I just want to give, have you give us a little inside look into what does it look like? What does it feel like to come into a room, maybe with someone you don't really know, or maybe you do know them, and you feel this pressure that <laughs> in two hours we need to come up with something that yeah people are gonna want to sing. I don't know. It feels like a lot of pressure to me. It is. I mean, it can be, <laughs> but um. You know, I used to really prepare a lot before those rates. So mm -hmm. I had my ideas journal. I had all my voice memos, my ideas, and I would pick out the ones that I thought might be good for that right or situation, you know, and um, I did that for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And my 20th year, the Lord said, now when you go into write writing rooms, I want you to not bring your journal and I want you to just listen to what I'm listen. saying in the moment. Yeah. And so 
there was a there was sort of a shift and I was still bringing my journal but I just left it in my bag and then I ended up leaving my journal on an airplane and uh lost all my ideas so I had to jump into that Mm -hmm. he told me anyways you know he told me ahead of time but you know a lot of times there is a pressure to have to finish something um in those moments but I think really if I'm honest like if you can worship with people, you can get to a heart level with them pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. And surprisingly, that's the that's the step a lot of times that gets skipped. Um, and that mm. makes it harder to try mm. to find common ground. But when you worship with somebody, you have immediate common ground with them. Yeah. And um, the flow comes a whole lot easier. And I will say, you got to take time to get to know them no matter yeah. what i mean even if you even if it's an hour of the two hours you have you know yeah um then you can understand hmm. where they're coming from and and what to say i can really identify with you in that like i don't write songs a lot but i've been doing a lot of these mm-hmm. uh, interviews and i started back in march and i was like it was so stressful and i would do all this research on the person and have all my questions lined up perfectly and just trying to but but now just like what you have said i've started to feel like i want to know of course like i did in preparing for this today i wanted to know a few basic things about you Mm -hmm. but then i'm starting now to just come into these conversations just trusting myself Mm -hmm. to like, I want to connect mm. with who you are in real time and not just go off my my notes, right? Like, I feel like yeah. you and I are talking like we could be sitting in a coffee shop. And I, I feel like in my case, like in your case, it's writing songs. In my case, it's just having conversations that hopefully mm. people want to listen to and learn from. And um, had some, I've had yeah. some really, yesterday I was chatting with, um, was it Darren from uh we are messengers and he was almost like tearing up as he's telling me Mm. a story about Mm. his wife and it's like i couldn't pre-plan that right you just had to be in the moment songwriting's Mm. gotta be like that that um yeah yeah and and even yesterday i had a moment where i was like oh this is why i i feel led to do it this way but but there was you know, we, we took time in our co-write yesterday for everybody to share their story. There was oh, three wow. other co-writers yeah. in the room and really just taking time to hear their stories. And as I heard their stories, I could hear their song. Like, right. And that was the first time I realized that. And this gentleman got done um, sharing his story. And I said, so can I sing back to you what I hear in your story? And he said, yeah. And so... Um, so I sang it back. It was just a couple of lines, but that's mm-hmm. what helped guide us into the song. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if we don't take that time to really, you know, listen and be in the moment of what's happening right then, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll miss, we'll miss those songs, you know, mm-hmm. or you'll miss those conversations. And yeah, there's something beautiful about being so in the moment. Yeah. Well, and I can see mm-hmm. that's also your unique gift. Not everyone maybe is quite like that, like you are, but you are a listener and a, and a hearer. That's what you said when I asked you what your mm-hmm. personality is. And how great would that be is if you're in a room with someone who's got another strong gift that like maybe it's the musical or arranging or I don't know what. Yeah. Well, let me just ask you, what what of all of the things would you say you're the weakest at personally? I can tell you what it is. Okay. It's chords arranging. Okay. Chords arranging. Well, see, I'm so not wouldn't good that, at that. Yeah. So wouldn't that be great if you could be in a room and hear a melody and then have another person just start sit at the piano and play some chords that you're like, oh, that's yes. perfect. I yeah. love when that happens. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, it uh, just brings peace to me because I don't yeah. have to carry that, you know? And then when I feel that lightness come, I'm freed up to do what mm-hmm. comes most naturally to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So maybe, you know, just the, the practical application of this, anyone listening in, because I think your songwriting test is free, right? It's Is it a yeah. free thing or is that there's a paid yeah. level as well? I think the extended test might be a dollar, but 
Oh, I mean, it's wow. Great. Well, someone can take out a mortgage for that. But, <laughs> um, but seriously, even just for the benefit of if you're writing a song to just feel a sense of peace of like, I know what I'm good at and I know the gaps I need to fill. And so yeah. I'm just going to kind of rest in that. And then songs are going to come out of a heart that's more at peace, right? I think. Yeah, 100% more authentic songs mm -hmm. and um that's super encouraging mm -hmm. well let's just talk a little bit uh for the next few minutes about like the the brave worship i wanted to just touch on that we have a lot of songs um you know in praise charts from this community it doesn't necessarily have chrissy nordoff's name plastered on the front of it but this is a community of people that you're working mm -hmm. with tell me a little bit about your heart for the brave worship yeah so um that's where all the mentoring started for me and it's it's really been going for about 10 years but what's most beautiful about that community is actually community that is what's mm -hmm. happening with it um i've never known a community like it i've never mm -hmm. seen such unity i have never heard such worship in all my life and we've done writing days we do monthly coffees we do all kinds of stuff but when we sing something happens and um mm. so over time we just felt like we needed to um capture some of these moments um and share them and so that's what we really wanted to do with this ep and through the process of the ep we um we do online sharing Fridays. So we looked at songs that came through that avenue. We looked at songs that came from our live uh, co-writing days that we did. Mm -hmm. And then we looked at songs that um, came from our trips. So we did a trip to Ireland and a trip to Scotland, writing trips with Ray Hughes. Um, and we looked at all of those avenues and we picked really three from, from those things. And um, we, we uh, did this live recording here in Thompson Station, but we were able to use, I think it was maybe 12 writers. Yeah. Um, we had over 22 girls in the choir. We had um, several playing instruments and it just was a way for us to make room for some of these songwriters that no one has ever heard hmm. or some of these vocalists that are so talented here in this community. Um, and, you know, just, just give people an opportunity to hear the voice of this community. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, so that's what we did. We, one of our biggest uh, values have... is making room at the table. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to just so ask we, about we this song. Is this that. song from, from that collection? This is just the one that we have yes. right now. Maybe just give us a yes. little window into how this was written and, and what it's about. Um, what what does this, is this a, a prelude to more songs like this coming? Is this from the Songs from the Barn collection or? Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. So this was the first single that we released. We're going to release four. They'll collect into an EP. Um, but they're also usable for church, you know. Yeah. Um, and the this one was actually came from a brave sharing Friday. So someone shared it with our community online yeah. and um, I heard it and I thought, Oh my goodness. So what, what I did with each of the songs just kind of as, you know, the nurturer of this family, um, we walked through a process of revisions with all of the writers and we talked through, had several conversations, how to um, make things a little more succinct or a little more singable, you know, or easier for the church to sing. We went through all this process with all the songs. So they all learned as they went through. And then, um, yeah, it was written out of a time really of uh, one of the girls. So I didn't write on this one, but I, yeah. I did help with the revisions and shaping. Um, one of the girls was going through a really rough time and felt like the Lord was saying, the joy is coming in the morning yeah. um, and it, it translates. And when we did this song live in the moment, oh my goodness, I don't know that I've ever experienced the joy of the Lord like I did. We really? were in two pieces, the choir, we were sort of facing each other opposite. And uh, we know each other's stories. We've been walking together for 10 years. So when I look across and my friend, Tanya, who just made it through cancer, you know, 
And I'm looking at her face and I'm singing, the joy of the Lord is coming. I'm remembering her story. Hmm. Or, you know, many, there's many amazing, beautiful people and stories. But you can hear, if you listen to the recording all the way through, we let it roll at the end. And um, you can hear nobody wanted to stop. We just kept wanting to go. Um, because we could feel God's joy in that room. Yeah. And um, so that's that's the first song. Uh, Wash Over Me was also coming, I think it released a week or two ago. Okay. We're doing one of my songs, which is Famous For. That's coming out next. It's an all-female version of Famous For. Is that the Torin um, Wells Famous For? Yes. You had yes. a hand in writing that song? Yeah, that's, I did. That's such a great right song. Piano. No oh, way. thank you. Wow. Yeah, I started right I here. I love it. Just singing, singing my song in the morning. Psalm yeah. 79, that one came from. Wow. But, um, yeah, and then, then we'll finish everything out this year with a song called Arise, which came from our Ireland trip. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, these songs carry great stories and, yeah. you know, uh, so many beautiful hearts and it's fun to give them room and space to, to run mm -hmm. and fly and sing and yeah. Beautiful. It's well, I love fun. that like you're in it, you're writing songs, but your heart also is to help encourage other songwriters with your book and your website and community that you're building. So, um, so it's super encouraging. So thank you so much for taking this uh, time with us. I feel like this has been really a personal, authentic, personable and, um, and practical as well. I think that uh, it'll be very encouraging for songwriters to hear your heart, Chrissy, and keep writing great songs and building community mm -hmm. like this. Thank and you, uh, and I hope that that barn happens for you, just like it. I'm looking for a barn as well. So one day we'll you have a barn and hang Lang. out with us. Okay, I'll bring all my cornhole boards. We'll play cornhole and then sing worship after that. That would be a, a good day yes. in the life of Ryan Dahl. <laughs> I mean, that would be your perfect day, right? I, yeah. You you're See, now you're starting thing. to get to know me, Chrissy. That's exactly right. <laughs> the guys in my oh. office right now are rolling their eyes going, oh, Dad. <laughs> oh, Ryan. Oh, well, oh. you got to be who you are, right? It's just, that's yeah. all we are. So, you do. very good. It's awesome. Okay, Chrissy, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day out there in in the hills and valleys of Nashville, Tennessee, in Thompson Station. Love it. And uh, all the best you. to you. All right. See you then. Bye. Bless. Bye. Thank you.